everybody. My name is Tyrone the Bone Proctor. I've been dancing for uh, years. <laughs> and uh, I'm very glad to be here. And I'm always happy to answer anybody's questions. And I think there are some questions that need to be answered. So I'm here to answer them. Now it's going to be, hmm. No, my favorite drink now is milk. That's my favorite drink. Kill him. Oh, I'm just living my life. Allow it. There are three of them. Uh, one of them is a teacher in Philadelphia by the name of Mrs. Shirley. The other one is a very good friend of mine. He produced new edition, new kids on the block. His name is Maurice Starr. And the number one out of all of them would be my hero and my mentor would be Don Cornelius. Let me go back and start this. Uh, the number one reason why I started to uh, teach whacking was because I wanted people to recognize and understand and realize the people that contributed to uh, to the dance. Whacking is, is the first dance that has ever had a resurgence like this. There has been no other street dance that I know of that has had a resurgence like this, that was reborn. Uh, the dancers, uh, well, we all know that they all came from the gay community, uh, which kind of in the early 70s was a, was a difficult time. Most of them didn't have a venue. Uh, then when one was allowed it to them, they would, they would often go to the club and use the club as a refuge. When they went into this, when they went into this specific club, they could, it was one, it was the only place that they could be who and what they who and what they were without without being ridiculed. And at that specific time too, uh, the music was changing. It was going from R&B and soul into what you might call underground disco, which meant that the songs had, they started to have extended versions. Like if somebody did a song, they would start to extend it. Now, most people would think that disco would be from from America, and it's not. It, it came from Europe. I'm digressing. Let me go back with uh, with with the dancers. Um, there were many dancers from Lamont Peterson, from Gary Keys, from John, from uh, Mickey, from Michelangelo, from Andrew, Arthur, Tinker. These were some of the pioneers and this is only this was on the black side you also had the spanish side which was basically mexican so you had them as well and they would all collectively go into a club and 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 start to uh they were so talented that they started to create from the music that they heard because generally if you're dancing, music is done, uh, dances, dances created from music. Each genre of dance that you do, whether it's popping or locking, they have their specific style of music. You, you know, once you learn how to do it, you can dance to anything. But, you know, each style of dance comes from, uh, it comes from the music that motivates it. The new generation, you know, all I can do is direct and guide and give them this information. It's 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 the new generation of dancers. What they do with it is is what they do with it. I have no control over it. I have no control over that. I have no control on who teaches it. I have no control over all of it. My only my only control is when I'm asked to teach or to do a history class is to do is to give the best class or the as much information when it comes to history as possible. It's it's extremely important and I try not to uh, leave anybody out per se. I try to invite everybody but 
the new generation is going to do what they're going to do. Some of it I like, some of it I don't like, but you know, that's me. I'm an old man. I'm going to, I'm going to like it. That's not to say that I don't want you to do it. You should always do what you do, what you do, do what your heart tells you to do. The internet, it did a lot. It did a lot of positive things, and it did a lot of negative things uh, to dance. Whereas the communication was in one little group, you now find it worldwide. And you find the information coming all over. It's almost like, let's just say, I'm in a club, and there's another person in a club, and there's another person in a club at the very same time. Now, all three of us are in the club, but all three of us are going to have three completely different experiences in that same club. I'm not going to experience it the same way somebody else is. I'm not going to see things that somebody else sees. So it's all going to be different. And I think people, when they talk about history, they, they, they start to compare and they start to say, well, this person's right, this person's wrong. This, and, and, and you really can't do that because now what you have to do is you just have to accept the fact that someone's telling you something specifically about their life and understand it. Now, whether if it's true or not, I don't know. But, you know, people are going to tell you what they're going to tell you. You know, you should be intelligent enough to understand or to realize when somebody's trying to you know, when they have an agenda or when they don't. The thing that I would tell, the thing that I would say is that if they're going to talk about history, understand the facts. Only deal with factual stuff. Don't deal with hearsay. In other words, if I'm telling you something about a specific dance, I should be able to prove it to you. If I can't prove it to you, that doesn't necessarily mean that it wasn't there. That just meant that it that at, at this point it wasn't proven to be factual. Well, people have always battled all the way along. But in, in my day, you know, they used to call it dance contest. Same thing. Uh, I often tell my students, I said, you know, a battle is just that. You're battling somebody. And if you're in a battle, you have to you have to understand what your competitor is doing. It's almost like this. I've told one girl, I said, well, if you see that you're sitting up there and you're whacking, and the one girl goes in the back and she does one, one set of it, and then then, then you go to the next, then they make it to the next set, and then she comes out with these heels and she throws her hair out, and then you're still in shoes? Uh-uh. You've got to match what she's doing. How do you expect to win? You see what I'm saying? You've got to match it. If she's up in the air doing cartwheels, then you've got to be doing the same thing. It's a war. It's one person after another. you got to, you, you, you got to push it. Either that, you're just an extremely good dancer, and you can and you can do it all, which is not always the case with a lot of dancers. But my, if you're going to battle, you have to watch your component. You have to watch what they do, and then match what then, then do more than what they did when it comes your turn. Mm -hmm. Most people don't do that. They're so busy sitting up there getting their breath. And they, and the other thing is that they've got to take time. Because that's where people start to lose who they are. They get out there and the adrenaline starts and you just, you start to lose it. The more control you have, the better you'll be. And it's just like performing. If you're in a performance, you, you, have, you have control of that whole audience. If you lose it, then you have no control. And sometimes people win, sometimes people don't, you know. It, it depends. Every every dancer has its day. Sometimes they're good one day, and then next week they may not be that good. And then the next week they may be even better than they were the first time. It just it, it's a natural progression. You're not going to be wonderful and on top 24 hours a day. It's just not going to happen. 
the best you can do is strive for that. And you strive for that by going inside yourself. You have to calm yourself down. You have to listen to that music. That music will tell you what to do. Let me say this about that. I said everybody has a right. Everybody has a right to teach. Anybody can teach. It's up to the students if they want to learn from you. It's not the teacher's fault. If my mother was alive and she wanted to teach whacking, she could do it. If the, if the students allow her to do that and she has no experience, then that's on her. She got away with it. But that's why if you're a student, you have a right to ask these people when they come to you, the, the event coordinators and everybody, and everybody else that bring these people from all over the world, what gives them the right to teach this? It's like what Janet Jackson said, what have you done for me lately? The swing now is for, for there to be a lot of, uh, how can I say this, a lot of dancers that win competitions, then they're asked to participate and, and, and to go to other countries and teach. You know, and every dancer doesn't make a good teacher and every teacher doesn't make a good dancer. You know, so a dancer can go and do this, but it, 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 it's not their problem. It's the students' problem. The students need to do their research because they're giving these people their money. And if they're giving people their money, they should get something back for it. That's why I said, if you're gonna learn a dance, the first dance that you need to learn, the first thing you need to learn is the history of it. You know, and that's just not mine, that's all the other ones that was there with me as well. You, you see what I'm saying? Yes. And then, And then when you hear all of these people's uh, personal opinions about this, then you should be intelligent enough to decipher what direction and who's telling you what and why they're telling you this. You see what I'm saying? I have no control over that. The best I can do is tell you is tell you how I live my life. I can't tell you how anybody else has lived theirs or if somebody else is is right or wrong. Can't do that. Will not do that. And that's a quote. You can quote me on that. I can only talk about me. I can't say anything else about any other historian when it comes to that. But I, to, to answer your question, students are responsible for who they have in front of them because they're actually they're the ones that are actually paying the money you know they should go to the event coordinator and say the event organizer and say well why is this person here because they won uh, uh, those dances because they just won a battle and if and if they want them there then they should be there that's their choice it's their money you can't say what's right or wrong about that I mean I, I have my personal opinion but you know to look at it you, you, you know it, it's not my place Come from within. You know, I often suggest to people, I said, you need to have uh, an alternate person. Like, if I'm going to go out, I would be, you know, my, my, my name is Tyrone. But then I would use a, a dancer's name and I would call myself maybe uh, Ashakia. And Ashakia would be the dancer. That would be my dancing name. So I would do all of that under Ashakia. And then when I'm finished, then I'd go back and be Tyrone. And Ashakia is a whole different persona of me. But that's my dancing persona. So that's, how, that's one of the ways that you can do that. That's one of the ways that you can gain confidence. There is none. Never. Mm -mm. The only restrictions there should be is physical, and that's only because you have to have enough discipline to do what you need to do. But mentally, there's no restrictions. No. Live your life, go for what good. But everything has discipline. Everything. Everything has a foundation. Because you can't build anything on a rocky foundation. So you must have a good understanding of your foundation. You evolve by learning the difference between being talented and creative. Many people are talented, but very few people are creative. 
You have to create what and who you are. You have to go by your own instincts. You know, I don't want you to dance like me. I don't want you to dance like her. I want you to dance like yourself. So, you know, you have to go from learning how to be talented, which most people are, and learning how to be creative. Individually creative. to start teaching the young people. That's where you started at. You get them five, four, five, six, seven, eight years old and you start teaching them. That's how you do it. Reach one, teach one. What do you do? <laughs> Good question. Um, I, would, I, I would think necessity. We all Everybody wants to dance, but then there's a difference between your wants and your needs. Some countries have more needs to do this than other countries. You know, like in America, America, it's kind of laid back. And I think one of the reasons why it's laid back is because most of the dances that everybody's doing around the world, they were done here in America already. And the excitement happens when the Europeans and the Asians start to start to not not learn a dance, but to understand that their body could be put in other positions than what they're used to. And I think that's what excites most people. If you understand what I mean. Many people are going to tell you their truth, and I'm not here to tell other people's truth. I'm only here to tell mine. And my truth is in the August edition of uh, Ebony Magazine, 1975, I mean 1978, on page 67. The reason why we, and this is not from me, but this is a quote from Jeffrey Daniels, Shalimar, the gentleman that taught Michael how to do the moonwalk, uh, the reason why we call it, we have two A's in it, is because we wanted to make a, a difference from the word being, uh, 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 having a negative connotation opposed to it meaning specifically for dance. Now, I can't explain to you why other people do other things. I can, I can speculate, but I would only be speculating. But that's why we call what we call it. That's why we call it. So that we can call it that. Do you understand? Everybody out there listening, I hope I look kind of sexist up here. Trying to say, stand up a little bit. If you don't understand the music, you will never understand the dance. I wish you love, peace, and soul. Bye.